Hello, boomers, and welcome to 2019. We're here with our first episode of the new year, and to kick us off, we actually had an amazing interview with Joe Hamill, who is the current president of the International Society of Biomechanics. Yeah, welcome to 2019. It's good to good to see you again, Hannah. It's been yeah, a little good to while. See you, Melissa. I hope I you know. had a good break. It was wonderful, restful, and relaxing. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's that's great to hear. Um, I'm Melissa, and I'm Hannah, and we're students at Stanford University. And this podcast is brought to you by the International Society of Biomechanics. Welcome to Boom. We have biomechanics on our minds. Boom. 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 Since it's the new year, do you have any new year's resolutions, Hannah? Well, I think, hmm, I haven't thought about this. I tend to make like a bunch of different goals that... New year's goals. You know, yeah. I feel like rather than just like one resolution. Yeah. But I think that if I had to just pick one resolution, I would pick being more cognizant of like being in the moment i don't know how to say that like that sort of yeah but just like being more intentional about like my actions and things rather Mm -hmm. than just sort of steamrolling ahead and not thinking about things too hard that's a good one i really like that how about you melissa (laughs) um i i would like to try more of the things that i've been wanting to try or like doing Mm. things that cultivate more creativity so I'm excited to start taking like a piano class and like wow. other things that I've been wanting to do that I think helps put you in a different mindset than kind of like the same routine so um, I'm really excited about that but actually the most common resolution is to get more exercise and be more mobile which hmm. um I think I hear a lot, and I think that's often why the gyms are super packed (laughs) for the first two to three weeks of the New Year's. We're also thinking about resolutions that we can make to be happier in lab and in life. And there was a really awesome article posted in Nature near the end of last year um, called The Seven Steps Towards Health and Happiness in the Lab by Fernando Maestre. Maestre, yeah. Who says that a productive lab need not be a negative environment. And so we're not going to read through all the all of the seven. Um, seven, but we picked out a couple that we thought were really interesting. And feel free to look up the article. It was a good read. Yeah. What was one of your favorites of the seven tips? I think my favorite is actually the first one, which we talked about on an episode earlier. And that's we are people before we are scientists. And yeah. our personal lives and our health are always more important than our work. And I think that in grad school, we in men, our mental health episode, I think we kind of talked about how sometimes that's forgotten and you put your value as a person into your work. And you should definitely value your work. But I think being able to separate so that from those, who yeah. you are is yeah, really important. Um, I really liked um, everyone is doing a job just as important as everyone else's. Um, and there's no like hierarchy in the lab, and so like, there obviously is, you know, a bit of structure with like the PI, and then you know, like we have postdocs and like older graduate students. But I think everyone is working really hard, and everyone is doing something that's really important to, you know, to the lab and to research and like progressing the research that they're working on. Yeah, I think that's a really important mindset to have. And kind of goes along with another one that I liked, which was that you can never compare anyone with anyone else. Like, Mm -hmm. just as everyone's doing a job that's as important as everyone else, you also can't compare between them. And I think not only can you not compare jobs, but you can't compare people's struggles or hardships. And I think it might sometimes be tempting to say, oh, well, they're only taking one class this quarter and I'm taking two. So, like, and they're not doing as much work. You know, it's, like, so easy to sort of maybe feel that way but uh remembering that really everyone is so different in the phd or graduate school and just research in general are such individual personal 
Yeah, I think everyone is that. is taking such a different path to get there. Mm-hmm. Like you work together, obviously, but you know everyone's going through their own mm-hmm. challenges, and so it's important to remember that. Right, and like kind of throwing that the other way too, like being easier on yourself, like yeah. not easy on yourself, but like giving yourself some slack too. Like if you're feeling, you know, underproductive or or something like that, if you're all you're doing is comparing to other people, maybe that's not the right metric to have. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And we also have a bit of boom to start off the new year. Um... Bit of boom. Bit of boom. Bit of boom. Bit of boom. And this is also a recent nature paper. I was just going to do this. That I found super fascinating because I think running shoe research itself sometimes it can be kind of fatty like you know you have the minimalist shoes you have the super cushion shoe there's like so many yeah. different types of running shoes and I think people get really excited about a certain type and then you know and then we had to do the research on it and then it doesn't always turn out that they're necessarily better for you in nature of November of last year there was a study on running in highly cushioned shoes and how it affects leg stiffness and impact loading mm-hmm. So they had people run in just like a conventional, normal running shoe and then a highly cushioned maximalist shoe. So like those super thick padded oh ones. Gosh. Um, and they... Like so Skechers they, step ups. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something kidding. like that. <laughs> and they had them run at two different speeds. And then they, ended, they found that the highly cushioned maximalist shoes changed the spring-like running mechanics and they ended up increasing the impact loading rather than decreasing it and it was actually more pronounced at a faster running speed so the ground reaction forces force impact peak and the loading rate were both greater in the maximal issue by 10 like almost 11 percent and 12 percent respectively so if you're running faster in a, this thicker soled shoe, you're actually going to experience higher forces. Yeah. You're saying than yeah. You so would. they did. They attributed the the increased impact loading with the maximal shoes to having like a stiffer leg during the landing than with regular shoes. Mm. Um, so they think that maybe the shoes with more cushioning are actually not protecting against impact related <laughs> running injuries. Huh. That's super interesting because, like, I'm trying to picture if I was, yeah, like, if you go to the extremes, like, running barefoot versus running with pillows on your feet, you might feel like you could drop your foot harder on the ground if you have pillows. But if you're running barefoot, like, you know, you never want to, like, drop your foot really hard on. Yeah, exactly. Actually, one of our friends just got running or walking shoes, I guess, that are super squishy (gasps) and soft. And she's like, it's like walking on clouds. But then I tried to walk two miles and I pretty much have plantar fasciitis like immediately (laughs) after walking two miles. And and I think some people probably prefer the maximalist running shoes and feel better. I think it depends on your running injury, Mm -hmm. how you like your running mechanics, Mm -hmm. your lower body anatomy, foot anatomy. So I think in general, there just isn't a one shoe fits all type <laughs> situation. And I think that's what we have to remember a lot is like just because there's an article out on some website that's like these are the new sh- like shoes of the future, you know, it's it might not be for everyone. Um so it's important to do these studies and and recognize that. Yeah, everyone is Cinderella. You deserve to find your glass slipper. <laughs> <laughs> we should start a Cinderella running shoe store where we mm-hmm. like create the right fit shoe for everyone. Yeah, that's a good point. Some running stores I've gone into and they've done a biomechanical assessment and whoa, like made insoles that they think will be the best and make um, pick out the best running shoes. And oh. I always think that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. To... Right. It should definitely be more individualized. Yeah. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Today we're talking with Professor Emeritus Joe Hamill from the University of Massachusetts Amherst School of Health and Health Sciences and president of the International Society of Biomechanics. Thanks for talking with us, Joe. Thank you for asking me to talk to you. We are hoping to just talk about what it's like to be president. Can you um, give us 
kind of some insight on on what it's like to be in that position? Well, I've been a member of uh, ISB since 1982, and I never in a million years thought that I would ever be president of ISB. And to me, um, it's an exceptional honor uh, to represent ISB um, in all of the countries around the world and all of the members from around the world. Why didn't you think you would ever be president? Uh, Because of the people that were president um, ever since I've been a member. The lucky thing for me is that I've known all of the presidents but one, and that was uh, uh, Wartenweiler. I never got a chance to meet him. And just looking at the people who were president, um, you know, early on, you know, uh, it was like a who's who of biomechanics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just never thought that I was in that group or could be ever be in that group. When did ISB start in, you said you joined in 1982. Was it, did it start then or did it start earlier than that? Oh, oh it started earlier than that. Um, there were two presidents before I became a member, uh, Jörg Wartenweiler and Richard Nelson from Penn State. Um, were the first two presidents. Pavo Komi was the third president, and that's when I became um, a member of ISB. It started in the early 70s. Hi, Joe. This is uh, this is Hannah here. I'm Melissa's co-host. Um, she really does all the work. I'm just I'm just here for the fun and conversation. Um, but yeah, I'm super interested in um, how it seems like you're very familiar. Yeah, you've known a lot of the other presidents. Do you feel like your presidency has been super different um, from theirs, or or how do you how do you maybe see any distinctions from how you chose you wanted to operate versus how they operated, or things you liked that they did that you wanted to carry out and do the same with? Well, I mean, I, I'm very strongly excited about the international aspect of uh, ISB. The one thing that has always been very important to me is um, bringing students in from, you know, all different countries. And that's why we've spent so much time on uh, scholarships uh, to travel to the ISB meeting, and especially from the economically developing countries. So my my view of um, the International Society of Biomechanics is making it truly international. Not just, a, not just a North American society or even a European society, but making it truly international. And I have advocated going to places like South Africa. We've gone to Australia and, you know, of course, Canada and, uh, and, and several places in Europe and, uh, and also in Taiwan. So that's very important to me. Wow. Yeah. What do you think have been the biggest barriers to making it truly international? Many instances... Um, that I've spoken to places around the world. Um, one, they don't understand the difference between ISB and say the world Congress. And, uh, there are other societies that have international in it that are also have biomechanics in it. And I think it's mainly a, a, a situation of advertising and marketing. And that's what we've been trying to do. Yeah. So what do you think does separate the International Society of Biomechanics from World Congress and other biomechanic societies? I think it because of uh, the emphasis that we place on students, um, that separates us from the World Congress. Um, we do as you know, we have as wide a, a variety of uh, areas studied, um, but like I said, we emphasize students in the World Congress. Um, at least up till now, has not done that. Yeah, I think that's really awesome and that you have such a big student following. And that's, I think, why we've loved, especially doing this podcast, kind of catering to that um, student audience and getting to talk to some really awesome people like yourself uh, that are a lot more senior than us <laughs> in the field um, has been has been really great. Um, so, so thank you for that. And thank you for all of your efforts in making this uh, a great society for us to be a part of well like i said i to me it's the premier society in biomechanics i do attend american society of biomechanics meetings and i do attend the world congress but to me uh, the world uh, the isb has always been the premier society in biomechanics 
What have been some unexpected challenges of your presidency? Well, the big challenge, I think, is that we only meet twice in a two-year cycle. Yeah. yeah. I, I would really like to um, meet more often, even, you know, even if it's just uh, video uh, calls or, um, you know, some kind of meeting calls. Now, I've tried to do that with Tony and uh, our, I should say, our past president um, and our uh, president-elect. But, you know, to get, uh, what is it, 16 or 17 people on a, on a conference call is really difficult, especially when they're all over the world. But that, that, I think, is a big challenge, is meeting only a couple of times uh, during um, a two-year cycle. Yeah, that is challenging. And I think when you meet and everyone is talking and you get excited about <laughs> different initiatives, and then it's hard when you have a whole other year before you meet again, some things yeah. tend to fall off a little bit. Well, I think that's my job, too, is to constantly remind people of what they're supposed to be doing and what they are doing. Um, you know, uh, in your case... Uh, in terms of the student things that we're doing, you know, I've uh, emailed you many, many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, we, very appreciated. <laughs> yeah, we do appreciate the diligence. I feel like, yeah, I get so many emails from, you know, so many people, but like at the end of the day, I really should appreciate that, you know, every email takes time and effort and someone is doing it because they care. So, um, <laughs> so, so thank you <laughs> for that. To me, the position uh, of student rep is critically important. And of course, I think the things that you're doing in terms of the recordings and using the um, social media are increasingly important, even though I have no idea about Twitter and I am not on Facebook. So <laughs> It's been pretty amazing to me to see the prevalence of biomechanics and social media recently um, yeah. and being able to disseminate research and um, new things happening in the field so quickly is is really cool yeah yeah well my postdoc uh, jillian whom you know you know she keeps me up to date on the twitter at least she shows me what it is but um i <laughs> <laughs> i i guess i'm too old to be uh, a social media uh, person right now <laughs> e um. email to me is the height of my social media Oh, that's that's a pretty popular <laughs> uh, avenue, I think. Yeah, I feel like and we've asked you a lot of questions about like things that you found challenging or um, as part of your job. But how about what's a favorite story that you have as being um, president or being on the council, being part of ISB? Any can be any story, really, that um, mm -hmm. that you yeah. enjoyed. <laughs> well, the the nice thing is that when I uh, became president-elect and then president, um, I knew uh, before I became president-elect that I knew most of the people on the uh, board because I had talked to them many times before. That was not surprising, but I always like to meet the new people that come onto the board. And, um, you know, that that's always the most fun for me is meeting the new people on the board. You know, I got to meet uh, Elizabeth Clark, who's new to the board, and uh, Rajani Muller Patan, who's also new to the board. And so it was interesting um, sorting my way through that, signing them to portfolios that would be uh, most appropriate for them. And both of them have done, um, both Elizabeth and um, Rajani have done a magnificent job in their portfolios. That's been very, very gratifying to me. Yeah, not just you starting things, but then passing that on to others is, is huge. I guess, I guess I was lucky in that when I came became president, I think I had something like seven or eight of the 10 board members were already there. They had been board members before and they ran and got elected again. So there was only um, uh, two new board members, uh, as I said. It seems to say a lot, though, that seven or eight board members would want to run again and stay on the council. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean... As you know, um, Melissa, it's not an easy job, <laughs> you know, um, being on the council and of course it's all volunteer, um, you know, is not something that it's not something that's easy to do. Right. But it's such a good team to work with that it makes it all worth it. Is, it. It is, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it, it is. Uh, I mean, um, like I said, I really enjoy all of the people and, uh, and of course, um, 
as president, you know, I, I've had to travel to many conferences and I always give my spiel about ISB before I speak at these conferences. You know, I feel like it's important for me to represent ISB at every conference I go to and I try to give a spiel. I have five or six slides that are my constant uh, take-homes when I speak at these conferences. It's very important. I'm sure many students in this society haven't had the opportunity to talk with you personally or one-on-one. -on -one. And I was wondering if you have any advice for students in or out of the society, students that are involved in the biomechanics field, now that you have a platform to kind of speak to them. Yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of students at conferences do come up and speak to me and uh, and I welcome them to come and speak to me. And I keep telling students, you know, it's not that I'm unapproachable. I think I'm em eminently approachable. And uh, I always encourage students to come and talk and um, ask questions. And I will spend as much time, you know, as I possibly can talking to them. In fact, at one conference, um, I don't, it wasn't last year, the year before, I missed the mentoring session because I was talking to two or three students. Oh, the irony. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought it was quite funny myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, as it turned out, those students that were in my group found me and I did end up talking to them. Oh, that's wow. good. Yeah. The most privileged thing to me is, um, is just being a member of ISB. And then if you can serve on the executive, that's, that's um, a good thing too. Yeah. I really like the way you've been talking about your position because I think um, your position and your involvement, I should say, it's very like humble. And I um, really feel like you genuinely enjoy the work that you do and um, are in the right mindset for um, carrying out that mission. How do you think your mission and ISB's missions align? Like, and if you could like put that all into like one sentence that you would put out, what would that one sentence be? I hope very much that um, my um, commitment and my thrust um, in ISB, my personal thrust and ISB's thrust are the same thing, and I think they are. And uh, and I'm I've always been very proud of the fact that that I think essentially the same way that most of the people in ISB think. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a, you know, a bad thing or a good thing. It's just that it's the thing that my philosophy and ISB's philosophy are, uh, are basically the same. How would you word that philosophy or frame that, the mission of, of ISB? ISB should be truly international and mm -hmm. it should always get students to be involved because the students are ultimately the future of ISB. If mm -hmm. you become involved as a student, you tend to be involved, um, you know, all the time. And that's the, the key thing. Yeah. What's your vision when you say truly international, what's your vision for ISB becoming that? Well, um, a couple of things. One, um, you know, I, I believe that we have to have the conference all on all over the world. And so there are a couple of places. We've had one conference in Africa, but it was in South Africa. Um, you know, I would love to see it in other parts of Africa. I would love to see it in the uh, Indians uh, subcontinent. I would love to see um, a conference in uh, Southeast Asia. Yeah. I've been encouraging people in... Um, in Thailand and Singapore and Vietnam to participate in ISB and then eventually uh, host a conference in ISB. And the same thing, we have so few members in Africa, which is uh, a shame. And, and also in India, we're trying, along with Rajani, we're trying to organize an Indian Society of Biomechanics. Oh, that's great. To, to be in line with ISB. There is an Indian Society of Biomechanics right now but they're really not very active, but we're trying to encourage them uh, to become parts of, um, of ISB. But, um, and I would like to go, I would like to see another um, ISB Congress in uh, South America, possibly in Chile or Argentina. We've had one in Brazil, but there are other countries that have uh, large biomechanics populations as well. Yeah, that would be amazing. 
How about um, Antarctica? Like, <laughs> that would be <laughs> truly international. <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be a, a tough commute, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, maybe maybe we could do it on a, on a, a ship uh, just off the coast of Antarctica and call it. Ooh, Ooh. like a cruise. Yeah, that would be an ISB cruise. <laughs> we should just cruise around the world. Yeah, because water, like, oceans are truly, like, no, right? That's, like, like no country owns yeah. them. So that would be truly international. international <laughs> yeah, it would just, it would be my luck that we would have a, a conference on a cruise and there'd be a hurricane or something like that. <laughs> so so uh, while, while it sounds fun, you can never uh, trust weather. That's true. Yeah. That's a good point. We forget that lesson being out here in California, but I am a Boston native, so I, I understand the lesson. I am, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm very familiar with UMass and the their food. Their food is so good. They're number one in the country, I believe, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. But, you know, I, just, I woke up this morning and I was getting in my car and uh, I looked at the thermometer outside my house and it was nine degrees. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's rough single digits. Yep. <laughs> it's that time of year. <laughs> Tis. What do you see as the future of biomechanics, um, either through ISD or just like the field of biomechanics in general? Um, what are you most excited about moving forward? Historically, when I graduated, biomechanics was um, 2D kin- uh, kinematics and basically 2D kinetics as well. And a little EMG. What I'm excited about is all of the different kinds of analyses that are being done. It's it's old hat to you, but moving into 3D in the mid-90s was a, a big step. And I, I think all of the things that are happening with uh, MR, uh, MRI, um, spectroscopy, finite element modeling, you know, and the modeling, you know, open sim and things like that, that, that to me is, is brilliant. And um, it allows us... Well, when I was a student, you could ask questions, but you couldn't ask the real questions. You could ask the surface ones. Now you can start getting down into the actual question uh, um, to try and find causality in, in certain kinds of movement. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. I, I feel like I've learned infinitely more as a, a faculty member. Even in the last 10 years, I've learned more than I did in all of my previous experience in biomechanics. And I started, in bi- I started in biomechanics wow. in 1976 as a student. Um, so, like I said, uh, the last 10 years have been just mind-boggling to me. And I just look at the students that are graduating now, and I think to myself, thank God I'm not a student now because I couldn't compete with these students. <laughs> <laughs> I think that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, listen, you should be – you should uh, – Look at my history and, and see that what, what the students are doing now, um, what my students or my postdocs are doing now is way beyond the capability of what um, I did for uh, in my graduate work. And I, I think that's a great thing. Uh, you know, to me, that that's, um, that's shows that biomechanics is truly advancing. Uh, it's becoming a mature science, and I think that's great. It's growing up so fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of your history, um, we usually like to ask what a um, research fail has been for you or a time that you've learned from a mistake in research. Um, that would probably take another couple of hours Um because I've made, <laughs> I've made so many. Most of my errors um, were just basic stupidity. I wouldn't think clearly, and I'd collect a whole bunch of data, and then I found out that the data didn't fit what I wanted, and so I'd have to go back and do it all over again. And I've done that a couple of times. Um, you know, no, nothing beyond that. I think that that's the most telling. Um, you know, and it, it's why. When I talk to uh, students now, I emphasize preparation. You know, um, you know, make sure that you are well prepared before you start collecting data. Uh, if you don't, the one thing I, I discourage and I rail against this is don't collect data and then try to ask a question based on those data. You know, that's that's about the worst thing you can do. 
so I said, most of my mistakes have been um, doing that very thing is not thinking through and then having to collect the data twice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, know you've ne- I know you've never done that before, but... Um, that just sounds like science to me. <laughs> there's a there's definitely a way to avoid it or to be better, a little bit more focused. But I think that oftentimes a lot of science is like you s- start out trying to look for one thing and then you realize, oh, I really should have been looking at this other thing. <laughs> is there anything else that you want to mention uh, before we wrap up? No, not, not really. I mean... Um... I've enjoyed our talk uh, here. Um, yeah, that's too. You're, ask, you're asking me questions that I've never really thought of before. <laughs> which is You've a got good, good answers, so. <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing. but um, It was good for us to learn more about ISB's mission, and I'm excited to play this and, and let other students and other um, people hear what ISB's mission is and how it really does stand out from other biomechanics societies and, and how the focus is, is really on the students. Yeah. And like I said, um, you know, I, I was just looking at the um, list of presidents and I mean, several of the presidents have passed away, but um, I notice most of them still come to uh, um, most of them still come to ISB, the ISB meeting. Yeah. Which, wow. which is, um, Rem- quite remarkable. And um, like I said, ISB to me has always been the epitome of um, uh, the epitome of science in biomechanics. Yeah, absolutely. And I've loved, I mean, just as a student, I've loved going to the conferences and, and meeting people all over the world and getting excited to catch up with them at the next conference and mm-hmm. either even like friends from Australia who come to the U.S. and then end up visiting. And, mm-hmm. and um, it's been a really amazing experience mm-hmm. uh, as a member yeah well i get an, a big charge out of uh, going to the meetings because i get to talk to people and particularly i get to talk to students so that to me is my role um you know when i go to uh isb yeah well um hopefully students that are listening will be encouraged to talk to you and other members of council and um learn from the members of isb yeah Definitely. I was going to say, um, most of my former students all say that I always look gruff uh, and um, <laughs> and unapproachable, but that's the exact opposite. I just, I can't do anything about my look. Um, <laughs> you have resting gruff face. <laughs> I, I think probably, um, you know, but, I, you know, students want to talk to me, just let me know and I'll talk to them until you know, I have to go to bed. So <laughs> maybe you should wear like a sign on your back that just says like, instead of kick me, it could say like, talk to me <laughs> with a smiley. Face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll try that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we will, we'll talk to you. Maybe we could have even like a booth or something where it's oh, like, yeah. come talk to the president. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually my presidency is up at the next, um, ISP meeting. That's true. Um, oh, wow. We're hoping to have the next president on soon to talk about yeah. his... Tony. Oh, Tony. I've, I've yeah. known Tony since he was a, a student in Cologne. And uh, oh, wow. he is... Uh, he's done brilliantly in his position. Yeah. I'm, I think it, it will be great. Well, thank you for talking with us. This was this was really um, a really great conversation. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. So we're going to do something a little different to what we usually do when we're ending our episodes. And normally this is where our research fails would come in. But instead, since it's 2019, we're going to throw away. Ooh, throw it away, throw it away, throw it away now. (laughs) That's right. You heard it. Throw it away. Three times Melissa said it. (laughs) throw away all of last year's fails. And we're going to talk about how actually not to fail at your resolution. And (laughs) (laughs) I just failed at delivering that. So we're going to talk about (laughs) the number one reason that people fail at their resolutions. Yeah. Any guesses out there? 
Uh, no. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just hear silence. So, um, apparently, the number one reason that people fail at their resolutions is the lack of having a clear goal. And I think this is a huge lesson. I feel like in science, in, in research in general, is that a lot of experiments and uh, research research explorations fail because there was not really a clear goal set out at the beginning, and maybe you're just kind of looking for something, but you're not really sure what you're looking for. And I think it's important to have that openness while you're doing research, but it's also important to have sort of a focus and specific hypothesis, just like Joe talked about in his interview that you know his re- most of his research fails came from being sort of lazy about that beginning step and just you know starting starting an experiment without really knowing what you're looking for. And I think that we should all start the new year with at least some kind of focused goal. And I think you can always change it, but like having some focused, clear goal to start. Yeah. One thing that I really like that we do in our lab is we start the year off with everyone presenting a slide of the goals that they have for this year. And I think Put, being able to put it into words is really helpful. Like actually write it down to a sentence into something tangible, mm. like something that you can, you know, you can do. Um, so it's like a realistic goal, and it's like has a clear whether or not you did it, right? Like there's a checkbox, and you can say like, okay, I did that. Um, and I think that's really helpful and um, something that helps you progress um, throughout the year and kind of like reminds you of. Like sometimes you can just look back at your goals and it, and it kind of helps you remind remind you of what you wanted to accomplish this year. Yeah, it helps you be accountable too when you like say it out loud and tell a room of 30 of your close lab members <laughs> that yeah. you're going to be held to yeah, this Yeah, definitely. If you can have a friend, like lab members or even a friend for our, yeah. some goals that um, – I know last year I had a friend where we made goal sheets together and it's like fun to then like check in on it and see, you know, how they're doing with their goals throughout the year. Um, I like that. I like that yeah. a lot. And have it be kind of a friendly thing. I feel like a lot of times resolutions are kind of scary and daunting, like, or even goals are sometimes mm-hmm. daunting, but like having it be friendly and fun and exciting because like this is... This is something that you get to work towards, I think, is... Yeah, definitely. And if they're big goals, like, oh, if they're big goals, you can always break them down into smaller goals for more, like, weekly or daily work, too. So I yeah. think having goals set is really important to making progress. Yeah, I like that. But what happens if you do fail? <sighs> if you because do fail... Because it's pretty much inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty much inevitable. I think that we uh, we were looking at some stats earlier, and I think it said something crazy like 80% of people fail by the first week of the year. <laughs> so yeah. if you do fall off your horse, <laughs> just remember that's part of the game, right? Like I think the biggest fail you can have is when you just turn away from your goal when you have a small fail. And, yeah. Um, you haven't failed or... Recently, I heard that what if you think about failure is just unfinished success. Mm-hmm. And so you just haven't finished your success at your goal yet if you if you happen to stumble along the way. So Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's like sometimes when um, I just start eating like really bad and then the rest <laughs> of the day I'm just like, whatever, I'll just eat these like 18 cookies because I've already I'm already in too deep. But, like, it really <laughs> is okay to, like, give yourself some slack and be like, that's all right. Like, that happened. Let's move mm-hmm. on and, like, keep progressing from here. Mm-hmm. And only have 12 cookies instead of 18. <laughs> I had chocolate-covered peppermint Oreos yesterday, and I didn't even know that something could be that good. Chocolate-covered peppermint Oreos? Yeah. It was, like, Were they like hand Christmas dipped? in a, yeah. Hand-dipped, hand-labeled, hand-wrapped because our staff... Here is amazing, and they just. I don't that remember to us. getting those um, myself from any staff. <laughs> you have members. to work in the hospital. Oh, is that it? Yeah. So thanks everyone for listening to the first episode of 2019. We look forward Yay. to to booming with you more this year. Yeah.
Long live uh, boom. Um, as a reminder, the abstracts <laughs> for the Congress are due soon. At the end of the month, there will be no abstract extensions. I repeat, no abstract no extensions. extensions. I was... So make sure you turn in your abstracts and submit for funding from like ASB or ISB. And join ISB as a student member and then you get an awesome discount on registration and then you get to be a member for two years. We just like doubled the length of our membership so then you can keep in touch with us until the next conference. And like sometimes we have events in between the congresses um, and you also like keep getting some of our emails and updates with opportunities for funding and traveling abroad and doing research abroad or like PhD, postdoc, faculty positions opening. So stay in touch with us. Become a member of ISB. And um, you can also follow the International Society of Biomechanics on Twitter at IS Biomechanics and on Facebook. And if you have any research fails to send to us, any suggestions for biomechanics on our mind, we're really open to feedback and, like, super happy to have it. So you can email us at isb.studentrepresentative at gmail. Dot com. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Go keep your resolutions running. <laughs> Biomechanics, Biomechanics off our minds. Off our minds.